I thought since React hooks came out and I, I had been using them, but I hadn't heard about anybody talking about them much at Bristol JS, I thought it would be interesting to have a talk about them. Uh, a bit about me, basically I work as a full stack software engineer. Um, I work remotely for a company called Tez. Everybody seems to be working remotely nowadays, but um, actually uh, I've been working remotely for them for a while, longer than that, before the COVID times. Um, I'm busy writing Python, deep into like AWS lambdas at the moment, but in Python and covering for the team lead. Um, Tez is a digital education company and um, there's about 50 engineers there, 10 teams, uh, and we work in a microservices based way. And most of that is supporting the website. Uh, so where, where there are teaching resources and jobs for teachers and that kind of thing. I'm not, I, I would normally in a talk, ask everyone about their background and get a sense of like, what do you all do? But I think it's really hard to do that in a, in a virtual talk. So um, I have met people in Crystal Jazz before. I get a feeling for what people are doing but it would be interesting perhaps to discuss afterwards um, so let's dive in so um, hooks so they got added to react 16.8 in february 2019 that was literally just as as i was in a team who were about to build a new user interface um, and it was actually rewriting the user interface that already existed. And the previous one had been written using um, Redux sagas and a REST API. And we thought how cool would it, and, and actually Redux form, I think. And we decided how cool would it be if we use GraphQL, uh, React hooks, and also uh, Formic. And we also did uh, some open source stuff around uh, dynamic forms. So that's what we were building. And uh, uh, one of the people in the team was a very small team, three developers. One person was very, very enthusiastic about all the new things. So uh, often we would use all the new things and then we would re retreat back. So what happened was actually we used hooks quite a lot and then we took some of the hooks out. So I think that's sort of interesting and maybe I'll come in onto the kinds of reasons we did that as we go through. Um, at TES, we tend to, uh, I'm just having a, a panic moment. You can see my screen, can't you? Yeah? Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, cool, okay. All right, so basically um, at TES, we tend not to use class-based uh, components in React. We go with functional components because we try, we find them easier to read, easier to test, help, they help us to separate the kind of presentational components from the more containing components. So we've been using that style and that's pretty much across all the teams. And so React hooks seem to fit nicely with this because it's aimed at a way of uh, managing things within functional components. There are very, there's very good documentation, which I've cribbed a lot of for uh, this talk on the uh, React website. So you might recognize some of the examples. Uh, I would say the, the, there's a, there are now quite a lot of hooks. Uh, there's, I would say the big three and maybe it's even the big two and also, uh, also RAM kind of thing, use state and use effect are the, the, the ones that are quite interesting as basic hooks and also use context. So I thought I'd give an example of each. And then there are also some more hooks from React. So there's use reducer and use callback and use memo, use ref, use imperative handle, which I've never used, use debug value, which I don't think I've used either. Um, but some of these we used and then we stopped using. Uh, and 
of course, you can write your own hooks. I have not written my own hooks, but I have used some custom hooks from other people. And now, now, but not at the time when we were first using hooks, there are a lot of custom hooks from other frameworks. So React Redux and React Router and GraphQL, they all have hooks that you can use. So that, that's something that I haven't explored yet very much. I got a couple of examples of those. And I think there's an interesting area around using hooks and using Redux and trying to find the right way for your application, I would say. So I'm going to start with a very simple example. This is the use, this is the state hook. And I'll try and kind of highlight it. So basically, here we are importing new state. We call the function, we give it an initial value. In this application, it's a counter. So the, 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 the initial value is zero. What you get back is you get a variable, which is where the values of the state is gonna be stored. And so you can find out, you can use that to display on the screen. And you, can, you also get a function and that function is what you use to set the value. So if I flip, so um, maybe I've got some code here in my other window. Let me just bring it over. Uh, so for example, I did a quick create React app and I've got a component counter there. Here's my counter. It's ignore that where it says use effect because I, I haven't talked about the effect hook yet. But basically you've got use state and you've got setting the counter every time you click the button. And if I go to my other tab, here it is. So you click it and you get the exciting behavior of the number going up and that is the, that's in the state. So that is the state hook. Then just to be clear, you put your initial state in, you have a variable to read the state and a function to write to the state. The effect hook is actually something I've used a little bit more recently, just when I was helping adding some tracking to our, uh, our company blog, uh, because you can, use it to perform side effects in your functional components. It, if you're familiar with the lifecycle methods like component did mount, component did update, basically it's called your effect hook will be called on every render. Um, so for example, here, here is here, here I'm importing it and I'm using it. And basically the effect is the function that will be called on the render, which is what you pass in there. You also um, have a thing that I've, I've forgotten, that I think it's dependencies, but basically you want to limit this happening. You, you want to only run this when the count changes. So um, I have an example of that in that, uh, that code. Let me just read it again. So if we look at our, now do look at this user effect piece here. Um, so here's the function we want to be executed. And this is typically things where you, it's typically used if you want to fetch some information or you want to manipulate the DOM based on uh, the state value. So for instance, in this, you can change the document title using the state value whenever the state changes. And that's how you use use effect. If I, I try and show you a more real example, because I just thought, well, this is a bit of a toy example. Let me just get something over here. So if I, 
this is like a real project um, doing stuff. And what you'll see is that it has a use effect and then it's calling a function called load slots. Load slots hits an internal API and gets the query, gets some results. So it's about loading data on whenever the state changes. So that is that hook. We go back to the, oh yeah, it's in the other tab. Uh, so uh, just to be aware that um, if you wanted a synchronous effect, you should use this other very similar hook called use layout effect. Because uh, if you use use effect, um, it doesn't block the browser from updating the screen. So um, if you use effect, uh, well, what says on the, the React site is that it can make your app feel more responsive, but you know, you might have something where you really want to make sure it's happening exactly at the same time. And that's when you would use layout effect. Uh, and there are also some other gotchas, I think. Uh, oh, oh, but first of all, I'm going to talk about the context. Oh, sorry about that. Um, so context, I'm not sure if you're aware, but basically in, in React, you can um, create a context. So it's, it's basically at the top level, it's a context that your app is running in. And um, then you can use that context. So you can, it's, it's effectively a way of not having to pass a load of parameters through a big long tree to get to a leaf node. Uh, so it can make the code look more clean, but it feels a bit like magic. And um, actually uh, the, it was the context hook, was, which was the hook that we tried using and then we, we decided to not use because we felt it's too much like this context is created quite far away from where you use it. And uh, when you use this context and you grab this sort of global uh, reference and uh, then you, it, it doesn't feel quite as neat. And so we, we, just, we kind of decided not to use that. I'd be interested to hear what other people think uh, afterwards, because obviously there's people with more experience on the, this call. Um, there are some what they, they there are some rules of hooks. Sorry, I'm going to move this out of the way. Um, so you should call hooks at the top level. Um, you shouldn't uh, call hooks inside loops and conditions and nested functions. Um, and then meant to be called in React function, functional components. So you don't call them from regular JavaScript functions. Uh, you don't have to remember these rules particularly because uh, you can actually enforce that by having, um, using the, the ESLint pl plugin that enforces the, those rules. At least it tells you about when you're doing a bad thing. So for example, I tried to, in my example, code example, I tried making a bad, bad one. Let's go get that. Uh, here. So I thought I would get this bad, bad one here. And I get warned that this is not a good idea. And that's not really how you're supposed to, but I could suppress that linting rule. And, and so it's just that, you know, if you use the linting, you can help, you can keep yourself in check basically. Um, and I go back to the browser. Then, um, so, he, actually, it turns out that quite often people might, because they're using an effect hook, um, 
to go and fetch some data, then it might be that you actually are setting state in an effect hook. There are some things that you need to uh, avoid. To, to uh, you can end up with flicker a flickering effect, um, and so this there's a second parameter here, which is an array, um, and you can have sometimes call this and have an empty array, but you need to be careful how you express things. There's a I'll share the slides afterwards, but there is uh, things to avoid. So this, for example, will end up never updating state A because it's the same uh, set state hook, I think. And But if you do this, it like this, where it's clearer. Um, so in the previous one, with both use effects, they, they run in the same react cycle, but the second state will set state will replace the first set state. So you should do it this way. And all I'm all I'm really trying to do is not go through a very convoluted example, but more just indicate that sometimes when you try using use effect hook, you might end up with some funny un, un surprising effects. So you just need to be a little bit careful with them. There's also, and this is kind of starting to touch into um, uh, Redux, there's, and I don't think this was a, originally in the first set of hooks that React released. I don't remember this from when I was using it last year, but basically there's now a use reducer hook. So um, it's an alternative to use state. So you can, um, give it uh, a reducer. And uh, so that if you're familiar with React, so you should be, you should know how this works, but basically um, this is where you have more complex state. I think I also got a code example for that uh, here. Um, so you, this is where I've got, uh, a more complex component. It's a it's a counter with a reducer. It's got two buttons, um, a plus and a minus one. And what we've got is we're using the reducer hook here. We're passing this is our reducer function, and this takes a state and an action, and we switch on the action type, and then we adjust the count that way. So if I can show you that, actually I have to first change the code for it to work. Sorry. Yeah, so if I comment that out and uncomment that one, save it, then should be refresh this. Now I've got my minus button, minusing things, and plusing things. Um, so that's how uh, you would use the reducer hook. Um, however, you might then be slightly conflicted because you might think, ah, oh, yes, but React Redux has hooks and you might want to use some of those instead. So for example, you can use dispatch from React Redux. Um, so you could have, wait a minute. So you, here you are, you uh, create, um, your constant, you could create constant, which is this use dispatch function, but it's a hook. And then when you click, you would call dispatch and you'd increment the counter. So that, that's yet a different way of doing it. Um, just to give you an illustration also, um, React Router has hooks now. So you can do something like this. You can have a use root match hook and then you can uh instead of uh and i'm just trying to think have i got an example of react root i haven't got an example of how you would normally do react you know use react router but i think you most people would be familiar with it i would have thought uh anyway just just to kind of illustrate that that there are a great variety of hooks that are around now. So it's not necessarily choose hooks or use a particular framework. 
you might want to use a framework and use the hooks because you think the code looks cleaner or nicer to read. Um, hang on a second. And I thought I put another example in here. I thought, I'm just going back. I definitely thought I had a, a GraphQL example. So let me find it. Uh, maybe, maybe I didn't. Okay, well, I'm sorry about that. I did think I had one uh, and I obviously haven't. Unless I didn't save my slide. Oh yeah, I did. Okay. That's mysterious. Ah, I see what's happened. Let me just... It's there, but it's hiding. Uh, let's say, I'll go back there. I'll go back there. No. It's again. I'm confused. Right, well, there is definitely a GraphQL example. I could show it you by dragging it over here, this way. Uh, yeah. So basically, what you would end up doing is you have uh, a use query hook, and then here's a bit of GraphQL, a GraphQL query called get dogs. And what you would do is you have, you do your use query specifying. So here's your use query hook. Here's your variable uh, defining the GraphQL. And then you would get this back, loading error and data. And then basically once you've got the data, you would render it um, using the, res the results of the query. So that's, and I think on the project I worked on before, which did use GraphQL. This is one of the hooks where we were excitedly looking forward to using it, but it never came out until it was it was time for us to uh, disband. So we, we still had a wish to add it and we never did. Um, I wanted to give put some slides together about React hooks and testing, but I did not have time, so I haven't. Uh, and I at the heart of it, basically, React hooks help you to simplify component design. What they don't really help you with is if you've got a complex app with a lot of state. And actually, the app that we were building, kind of, I, uh, have I got it running? Yeah. This was the app that we were building, and it's a thing where you can design an advertising campaign and you would click a slot and you'd have to you know, choose a date and then you would have a bunch of filters. And it was actually a very complicated thing. And then um, we never did, I'm just going to, this is not a very good way of doing the dates, but uh, uh, let's see. Um, if I do, Save and continue. I should be able to then. It has a way of previewing stuff um, like this. And actually, as you do this drop down, you end up with different fields. And you're able to upload images and stuff like that. Um, Uh, so basically, uh, and then maybe if I could see that, uh, what I'm kind of alluding to is we chose this technique um, and we went with not using Redux and using Formic and not using Redux form. And I would say as a result, we have left our business with a bit of legacy code which nobody really knows how to maintain so 
are not massively endorsing hooks. They helped us make, we really like the code that we wrote, but other people have not been familiar with it. And I think you've got to bear in mind when you're making technical choices that you should choose things that are not too new and that people understand how to maintain. So I know it seems like a funny conclusion to make, but I would say that that was um, my conclusion from doing that. <laughs>